Well, thank you very much for these nice words. Right? At least I suppose they were nice because I did not understand. <laughs> but, uh, except, of course, you see. And it's a great pleasure for me to be here and back, actually, to see all friends. And uh, so, this will be the subject. And the subject is related, well, to what you probably know or don't know, I don't know, but we'll see later if I can do something about it. Uh, so let me situate the problem. You see, in, there were impressive development of physics in the first half of the 20th century. To the point, really, that one could even conceive, and some people thought but like this, that all phenomena from the atomic scale to the edge of the visible universe could be ruled by two laws and two known laws, essentially. One was general relativity of Einstein, which is the generalization of the Newtonian, the old Newtonian theory of gravity, and quantum electrodynamics, which is the quantum version of the uh, Maxwell theory of electromagnetism, which is supposed to explain every electric magnetic phenomenon and for the propagation of electric wire waves in essentially all kinds of lights. But between gravitational and electromagnetic interaction are what one calls long-range interactions, meaning that they are felt by objects no matter how far they're separated from each other. It's obvious from the light because you can see the star, and it's obvious also for gravity because they rule, in particular, the uh, motion of the planets, and you know, the galaxies and clusters of galaxies. But, so, uh, but the discovery, actually, of subatomic structure below the level of atomic, the level of the nuclear of the atom, and below, as you will see, has revealed the existence of other fundamental forces that are short range, that means they're not really felt on larger distance scales than these sub-nuclear scales. And in the beginning of the 60s, there was no theory and no consistent theory interpretation, rather, of the short-range interactions. Robert Brown and I, and independently, Peter Higgs initiated a solution to this problem. Robert Brown passed away in 2011 and left me alone to tell this story that, as you will see, shed light on the origin of mass of the elementary constituent of matter. Now, the first question, of course, which I'm going to treat is why do we need the theory of mass? Of course, we need all the theory of things we don't understand, but why the theory of mass? There's a lot of things that we do not know, all the parameters and all the things like this, but why should we not say, well, we, mass is just something we don't know, we put in the experiment and we do something out of it. As you will see, it's not that simple once you try to make a theory. So the first question, why do we need a theory of mass? And that will lead us to a concept which played a big role in the understanding of this problem, which was spontaneous symmetry breaking and its generalization, which is the BEH mechanism, the bottom of the mechanism, and its constituents, which are scale of both of us. And uh, I will then discuss the discovery, or very rapidly evolved the discovery of the boson, which was essentially explained the theory, uh, I mean, made the theory uh, verified, essentially, 
silently and deep. And then I will show how this delineates the known for the unknown, both in the elementary particle range and also in cosmology. And the link between the two will appear clearly now. So let me start. Why do we need a theory of mass? As I said, we have a theory already in the, in the 60 we knew general relativity, we knew electromagnetism, but there's a big difference between these two because electromagnetism was valid not only, only classically but quantum mechanically and that's why it could be explaining things at the very small range also, despite the fact that it's long range forces. For instance, it explained all essentially the the background of chemistry was <coughs> as, an, as an effect essentially only of mathematical dynamics. And uh, so, let me both and myself, we thought that the theory of short range should be inspired from this and uh, should be essentially related to these long range forces. So we decided to look into generalized theory. So first, electrodynamics, as I said, transmit long-range forces of electromagnetism. Why? Well, because this is a Feynman diagram. Time is run here from bottom to top. This is in a, a 